Thank you very much uh, for coming. Before we begin, I want to make a short uh, statement about the continued uh, reforms that my administration is pursuing as it relates to water meters. Today, the BOE approved a $9.7 million investment towards overhauling Baltimore City water uh, meter system. Our contract with EMA Incorporated will provide the city with additional support to ensure the process of installing the new wireless meters moves as smoothly as possible. The city has already approved an $83 million investment to begin installing the meters, and the citizens expect that we're going to do everything in our power to ensure that these funds are expended uh, as efficiently as possible. Today marks another step in that process towards getting it right for our residents. Our new system will result in greater meter reading and billing accuracy, which is, uh, has been expressed by many to be very important. Elimination of estimated water bills, enhanced customer service, and quicker detection of water leaks. I know these are things that I've mentioned before. Not a day goes by where residents don't express their frustration and uh, their frustration as well as their belief that there needs to be reforms and bring reliability to our water uh, billing system. This gets us a step closer. I share their frustration, which is why I continue to act in bringing a reliable and efficient system to Baltimore. With that, I will open it up. Could you tell us a little more about what EMA is doing and why the, the functions of EMA wouldn't be performed um, by the, um, the city um, water department, water bureau? They have a strong understanding of the requirements and they're going to supplement the staff with the resources and the oversight that the process needs to make sure that we get the right management of supervisors and on-site field staff uh, to observe the work uh, performed. This is a very large uh, investment that we're making and we want to make sure that it is uh, performed effectively and efficiently. This type of investment isn't something that any water department takes on routinely, so it's, uh, I think it, it is understandable that you would get additional resources to manage that type of uh, project. I understand there's going to be a pilot first for this, um, one of which will be for the city downtown. Do you have any um, timetable of when th this will start being instituted? I don't, uh, but if that is an answer that you require, I can get that information for you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, we've been doing some stories concerning a detective in the police department that um, raises some pretty serious allegations of being subject to harassment, taunting, even outright witness intimidation after coming forward to report um, and to become a witness against two other police officers. Um, how do you, I mean, what, what, what's your response to that scenario? I mean, this is obviously a city that's had horrible problems with witness intimidation. People were reluctant to come forward. And now, apparently, we have the same situation within the police department. Certainly not something that I expect uh, from any of the police officers in the force. It's something that uh, I think is reprehensible, and it's something that the police commissioner takes very seriously. I know that you've had uh, multiple conversations with him. Uh, he's taken very um, overt action in support of the, the officer that came forward and in uh, condemning the conduct. It's not something that we're going to uh, stand by and allow. It's something that uh, he's taking steps to address. You've been there since this started mm -hmm. um, in 2011. That was the incident. Mm -hmm. And that, I know you're not a micromanager of your police department, but I'm like, some others would really know. But, um, <laughs> but I don't think it requires multi it, I don't think it requires uh, micromanaging to make it clear what's expected. And at every turn, you will see in my administration that I'm not going to sweep these issues under the rug, whether it was the uh, corruption with the officers with the towing scandal, uh, whether it's the intimidation. We're going to face the issues head on and fix it. And uh, just like we're doing with this, with, the, with this incident, we've worked with the ACLU on uh, procedures. I know that the commissioners talked to you about that. We want to make sure that, um, you know, that, that we protect the rights of the the, uh, the citizens as well as protect the safety of the officers and I think there's a way to strike that balance and that's what we're going to do. Madam Mayor, do you have, um, I know it's been deferred until next week, but as far as the settlement with Christopher Sharp, 
Mm -hmm. And I was speaking with Mr. Nielsen. He had mentioned that training is going to be modified as part, under that settlement. So Anytime we have a settlement, I've asked the law department to work with the police department to find out what we can do uh, to make sure that we don't go down this road again. So if there is, you know, sort of teachable things that we can get out of it, we try to look for those uh, opportunities at, at every turn. You know, I think it's, it is, yes, we have to, to deal with the, the cases, but I think part of the work also should be trying to figure out how we can be better because of it. I mean, we can't turn uh, the, the hands of time, we can't turn the clock back, but we can learn and try to move forward. Is it disappointing, in your opinion, that the city has to pay out two hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, as a result? Of I don't. The, I. The when there is place. when when we get into a situation where we we've, we've fallen short, and because of that, have to spend um, money uh, to be able to settle, it is extremely disappointing because my. Yeah, you always you hope for the best that every time when someone goes out, no matter what department, that they're going to get it right. Um, I understand that we're all human beings, and we have you know it doesn't matter what profession you're in, you're going to have failings. But the goal is to try not to revisit those same things and try to learn from them. Madam Mayor, how's the uh, storm cleanup? Do you have? Oh, I thought for sure you were going to ask me about my snow budget again. No, I did that yesterday. I messed up. <laughs> So Potholes. Well, well. Do you still have crews going around making sure that the neighborhoods get retreated because some of that stuff is frozen over? Or do you have? Yeah, and we have the inspectors out there, and we're monitoring very closely three one one to see. You know, we always ask for citizens to help us identify the places that need uh, attention, and the best way to to get that information to us is to call in three one one. There's been some um, staff turnover um, over. And recently at the uh, Baltimore um, Development Corporation, the um, officer involved with Harbor Point has resigned, so is the um, officer who was responsible for the West Side Initiative. Are you concerned about the, the turnover, and um, do you have full confidence in Brenda McKenzie? I think anytime you have a relatively new uh, agency head or uh, division head, there is a period of assessment, and after that period of assessment, it, I don't think that you can find an instance where there aren't changes. Uh, we've, uh, there have been people who have been extremely uh, helpful to my administration, and in a perfect world, you'd keep all of them forever. But uh, when people have other opportunities that they want to pursue, I make it clear to everyone in my administration, I'm always grateful that they give their best uh, to my administration and to the city, but if they feel that there's a, a better opportunity that fits for them and their family, I'll never stand in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, of that. What about the loss of institutional knowledge? Um, since this is, you know, for example, at Harbor Point with the main person that was involved with the city now leaving. I think it's, uh, it, you certainly benefit when you have a seamless uh, transition and someone who understands what's going, um, the, the history, but I don't think, you know, change happens. So um, you don't see this as, as more than ordinary change? Because there has been more than a, do a half dozen fairly senior um, resignations in, in recent weeks I mean, at, the, they, at a pretty small um, agency. Well, like I said, uh, change happens, and when there's new leadership, there's always shifts. Sometimes it happens up front, sometimes it happens later. And no matter you know, what position uh, you're in, especially in your, when you're in a position that requires so much, like a small agency like BDC has to do because they're a small agency, it's understandable that you know, sometimes people, it doesn't work for everyone forever. And people um, you know, make decisions to, to do what they think is best for their family. Again, I'm never going to stand in the way of someone making that so decision. So the agency itself is on the right course in the management of the agency, as far as you can see? I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. We have a lot of positive projects that are going forward. The focus on small business development is the right, uh, the, the right decision. And I think um, I'm looking for, I'm optimistic and I'm looking forward to good things to come out of BDC in the future. The uh, city is still considering a new contract to for someone to conduct the citizen survey. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering where is that and how would it affect planning for the 2016 budget? 
uh, the survey that was done last year, that was already done, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you're considering that for the upcoming 15 budget. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have an up a status update on that process. I can tell you one of the things that I'm looking uh, for in a citizen survey is a way for it to be more than just a snapshot in time. Right now what we have is we know from this time period uh, in one year to the same time period in, in another year, um, we can get a sense of what's on the mind of the public. But it does the way that this uh, citizen survey is set up now, it doesn't give us a lot of information to help make it better. So it doesn't, and that's one of the reasons why I've uh, revamped some of the work that has happened out of CityStat, because we're trying to get a better sense of mm -hmm. what, um, what quality service looks like for our residents. And when I say that, it means different things in different areas for different people. And my goal is to try to get it right for as many of us as possible. So when we focus on, um, you know, we filled that pothole faster than we did two years ago. Okay, that's fine. But is that, you know, when, uh, when you ask a citizen about the quality of service, is speed what they're looking for? Is it the, the way in which we communicate what's going on that they want uh, more of? So in trying to fine tune how we can provide better services, I've tried to use uh, the city set process to get to dig, to dig deeper into those 311 calls to get that information. And hopefully the citizen survey will be a better foundation to do some of that work. Is that part of the reason why when the new bid went out and went from a annual survey to with a biannual option, mm -hmm. or was that more to keep in line with the budget for the amount? Because the original bid uh, was, did not meet the goal of uh, $60,000. It's to try to figure out how to, to have it as a more useful, you know, more practical tool uh, for gauging uh, not just where people are, as I said, in, in a moment in time, but what are the things that people want to see changed in order to move the needle on some of the things that they're concerned about. What is the status of the directorship of city stat? Is that, um, do you have someone in mind or what's the... Yeah, the we announced priority? that a couple of weeks ago. I missed it then. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any um, comment on the release of Marshall Conway yesterday? Nope. What about, like, back to the water meters. Mm -hmm. I know um, a few months ago, Mr. Chow said that uh, customers weren't going to have the option to opt out. Is that still the policy? I can find out for you. Anybody else? All right, thank um, you so much. Oh. Opening days in 26 days, how do you think that those are going to do this year? I, you know, I think I, I start out the, I start off the uh, season like everybody, extremely optimistic and looking forward to the first two weeks or two months of the season where we're the best team in the, in the league and we'll see where we go from there. I think we are setting ourselves up to have a better season than we did with some of the, the picks and I'm, very encouraged and I, we got a taste of what it felt like to really be a, con, uh, a team in contention I think it was two seasons ago and it felt good in the season um, it, it felt good in the city and I'm looking forward to, to a little bit more of that one other question what episode are you up to on House of Cards I am I am I have to parse it out because mm -hmm. I really really enjoy um, the series and because you know how many episodes there are up front I, you know, you just got to kind of... So what are you up to now? I'm, I'm up to the second one, and I'm going to stay... Of season two. Of season two, of okay. course. But you have to space it out because, you know, after you get to the end, it's done. I know. Very, yeah, it's a letdown. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and but you remember, you can remember from from one to two with a, with a big space because I get... Oh, of course I can remember. I'm I am totally engaged in the whole thing. I am a, a big. <laughs> no, it's not just that. I just really, really like the series, and I really, really so like Kevin it. Spacey. And I think he. Why is that funny? That I really, really no, no, like. No, no, oh. no, no, no not about Kevin. Kevin. Kevin's great. Older. Oh no, I think he's fantastic, and I think Robin Wright is. Um, Fantastic. I was, um, it did take me a little bit to get past the, from one to two just because of the ending. Yeah. Of, um, the, the yeah. 
that was just what a bit much. What station was that? Somewhere here. Was no, no, no. It was Chevy Chase or something. It's headed. Yeah. What was it? It said uh, the. Was it Chevy Chase or Forest Heights or something yeah. like that? Uh, it was some. It was you know. I think it was. A, I thought it was it, Baltimore. No. I think it certainly wasn't the huge no, no. of the downtown. Station. It wasn't the one like at uh, Center um, Lexington. But yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, it was, I think it's a state center that has the... Anyway, I'm, I am totally a fan, and I will talk about Kevin Spacey at every chance I get. And how are you going to convince the Academy, uh, the Oscars, to, to break you know, into... I don't care. That? All I know is if I have a chance to talk about um, House of Cards and Kevin Spacey on national television, I will do it again. That's your Oscar question? Yeah, it's my Oscar question. I got a better one. Do you feel that Pharrell was robbed for a best song? I think he got robbed of the other part of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Bye.